recreation and our open spaces. Committee members, I'd like to call your attention to the agenda. Quickly, we're gonna review what is going to be our work this evening. We'll have a few opening comments. We'll have a follow-up from staff. It will be followed by agency presentations, public comment, brief discussion, and closing comments. I'd like to remind those in the audience and viewing that citizens are also invited to submit comments via the essayspeakup.com. Likewise, the city's 311 phone line. All committee members should have received an email from staff last Friday, November 12th, addressing requests for additional and specific information. Please note this has also been posted to the city's website and remind you again, comments received from the essayspeakup.com have also been included in your materials this evening. Some quick reminders, committee members. When addressing the committee, please use your table tent. There are 30 of you. We are doing our very best to recognize you. Again, the last time we did this, it worked very well. Simply put your table tent up. If I don't recognize you, please speak up. When you do address the committee, please make sure to say your name and your city council district. Don't forget, press the red button with the mouth looking icon. So we know that this evening, outside agencies and partners of projects recommended by staff will be given an opportunity to present. Citizens, citizens to be heard will follow those presentations and my co-chair Jim Bailey will facilitate with staff support to keep us on track and allow us all to be heard within that time period. If there are no further questions or comments from the committee at this time, I'd like to invite the staff to begin presentations. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Homer Garcia III, Director for the City of San Antonio Parks and Recreation Department. We will begin this meeting number two with a brief staff presentation. Um, and right here is quick reset for the Parks, Recreation, and Open Spaces proposition. Um, as it stands right now, that is $274 million across 67 projects. We can see the breakout here across the five different categories, 107 million in district projects, 25 million uh, citywide. We have 110 million for our Greenway Trails. Uh, public art is at 1.5% and $4.1 million, and then $28 million that are tied to regional centers. So this slide looks very familiar from meeting number one, wanted to kind of quickly reset. Um, year to date, actually since inception of the sales tax in 2000, with um, the sales tax that was approved in 2015, we have collected $190 million for our uh, Greenway Trail system. And all of those funds have been committed and tied to projects to date. With that, we have 86 miles that is completed, that is as of earlier this year, most recently with the connection of uh, Leon and Salado. But we also know that there's additional investment from our partners to extend this um, development of the Greenway Trail System. So this is what it looks like right now, 86 miles completed this month with our sales tax. And this is intended to be a representation so everybody can see the growth of our system from 2000 to where we're at right now. Now, I mentioned that there is 190 million collected and all of those are tied to projects. So while we have 86 completed, we do have an additional uh, 24 miles that are slated to come online, also funded with the sales tax. And that is represented here on this slide. So those uh, additional projects are this uh, goldish or wheatish wheat color, and that's intended to show what is currently funded and is either in design or construction and will be completed with the sales tax. 
Now, beyond the sales tax uh, trail miles, we know that uh, Bear County in the River and Creek program have committed to uh, more than $83 million over the next decade for continued investment in the hike and bike trail system. And the River Authority, San Antonio River Authority, will be acting as project manager. So what this slide represents is where we will continue to see the build out of our trail system. And that is the um, red dash lines. So you can see the growth and layering of what we would complete with the sales tax that when the River Authority continues investment will tie directly to the trail system. And then in the proposed bond, we have $110 million for continued investment and build out of the Greenway trail system. And so again, you can see that network and what it looks like. Now, this map does have letters tied to it in each of your binders. There's that project list so you can see exactly where that project will fit in in the context of the larger trail system and how it all fits together. And so a proposed number of miles upon completion of that uh, would be at more than 150 miles of our trail system network. This slide highlights where we're at uh, in terms of timeline. Today is meeting number two. We know that we have meetings three and four uh, coming here in December. And then in January 12th, the bond committee uh, will recommend that project list. And then in early February, city council will consider that, approve the project list that the voters will consider for um, proposal or to support in May uh, of next year. So the next portion of this, and I will yield the floor back to the chairs, will be the list of staff recommended projects with outside agency partners. We do have partners with us here this evening that will uh, provide some additional insights into those recommended projects. Thank you, Homer. Um, so just before we get started, if I could ask uh, everybody who's on the slate to present, it looks like we have nine um, partners signed up. Uh, if you could, if you're next on the list, if you'd go ahead and um, go up where John is, is pointing and be prepared to take the podium as soon as the, the previous speaker is completed, that would really help us move, move us along. So um, the um, first up is um, Activate SA to speak on linear trails. You guys hear me? There we go. Hey everyone, members of the committee, co-chairs, council members, city staff. Thank you for the opportunity for us to present. My name is Carrie Kuomura and I'm the executive director of Activate SA. We're a nonprofit who seeks to enhance active transportation options in neighborhoods across San Antonio, including pedestrian, cyclists, and transit investment. Activate SA is a community-led organization we work with San Antonians and major institutions finding potential projects and connections to make their neighborhoods more active, accessible for all ages and all abilities. We do this by providing mapping, graphics, and analysis to our community, making those projects feasible in the eyes of the city. We're honored that four of those community-led projects were deemed feasible for this bond cycle. Tonight, I'm here to talk to you about the Linear Greenway Trails. We support the city recommended $110 million funding allocation. The Greenway Network is one of the most beloved assets in our city, with usage nearly doubling from 2019 to 2020 and 75% voter support for their funding. The Greenway is essential to making every neighborhood, regional center, and major civic institution linked in a safe, accessible, and fully roadway separated transportation network. These projects are also directly aligned with the four lenses for bond project analysis. One, public health. A new Greenway Trail at the Medical Center will make it a place that doesn't just heal, but promotes healthy living. Since building the Greenway Trails, our ranking on the list of fattest cities in America has dropped drastically from 
2 to 17. Connectivity. These trails connect communities to parks they have never had access to before. The Port SA trail connection will complete the citywide Greenway Loop as originally planned. Resilience. Greenway projects like the Brooks Green Loop and the Flyway will improve our drainage infrastructure to move water effectively through potential riparian landscape and help these drainage areas move not just water, but people too. Finally, and most importantly, analyze these projects through the lens of equity. The Near Eastside Trail will link amazing access to Dignity and Lockwood Parks, the Hay Street Bridge and Ella Austin Community Center to downtown in the San Antonio River. This finally offers a safe connection for those on the east side who don't have the option to drive. Simply put, residents everywhere deserve the same opportunities to move around San Antonio however they choose. Plate of Extended Greenway Trails make that a possibility. The full $110 million allocation for the 16 proposed projects is critical for the completion of our Green Loop and take us to a long way down the path to equitable access for all San Antonians. Tonight, you'll hear a number of regional and citywide projects tonight, but the Greenway Trails are the only proposed citywide bond project that actually invests in every single council district. Thank you all for your time. I'm available for questions, and you can email me at the above address. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next up, we have um, Brackenridge Park um, and also the Botanical Garden and the Zoo. Um, these three outside agencies are going to do a combined presentation for nine minutes. Following them, um, we'll have H Park uh, presenting on the Civic Park. Thank you. Uh, my name is Maurice McDermott, and I'm President and CEO of the Witte Museum. Thank you all for your service as bond committee members. The WITI does not have a request for bond funding, but it is my great privilege to represent my colleagues on the cultural corridor, including the Brackenridge Park Conservancy, the San Antonio Botanical Garden, and the San Antonio Zoo. For more than 100 years, these city-owned cultural centers have provided school children, family, and individuals inspiring places to enjoy the river and nature, to learn about historical legacies, and to appreciate the flora and fauna of exotic places. We welcome millions of visitors each year with studies revealing that people come almost equally from the city's 10 council districts, cumulatively three to four million people each year. We serve hundreds of thousands of cool school children, including free admissions to Title I schools. Every school district in San Antonio is represented with children from preschool to grade 12. We raise millions of dollars of private funds each year to support these cultural spaces but we do need your support for these transformational endeavors. Most important, we reach out to community partners throughout San Antonio to test and ensure we are serving the needs of schools, families, and individuals. We do the work of seeking input so that every change we make will be celebrated. The bond requests you're about to hear about are needed to both preserve and activate these cultural centers. The first presentation will be from the Brackenridge Park Conservancy. Hi, my name is Lynn Osborne Bobbitt, and I'm Executive Director of Brackenridge Park Conservancy, District 1. The Brackenridge Park Conservancy was formed in 2008 to be an advocate and a steward for Brackenridge Park. And we have worked diligently over the last few years planning and understanding the park as a whole and comprehensively. And it is an important area of the city that includes very uh, important cultural institutions and they're all located within the park. As the second oldest park in San Antonio and one of the largest, Brackenridge Park is a treasure for all citizens. It anchors the cultural corridor and celebrates a relationship to the headwaters of the San Antonio River and its ecology along its culture and history dating back 12,000 years. The park forms a landscape that has national, state, and local significance. Its time has come for enhancement and preservation to ensure that it, continue, that it can continue to be a place of enjoyment for future generations. In 2017, hundreds of, of uh, users of the park came together to create a master plan for Brackenridge Park. In 2018, the Brackenridge Park Conservancy, in coordination with the San Antonio River Authority and the Parks and Recreation Department, commissioned a cultural landscape report. And this recommendation is an action plan to address park improvements, preservation, and future management. <clears throat> 
The Brackenridge Park priorities are presented for, for funding in the 22 bond, and they advance the priorities and the strategies laid out in the master plan. Preserve and, re and restore cultural and historic features and restore the natural uh, features and improve water quality. Our first request for you to consider is 2.5 million for the improvement, enhancement, and eco-restoration of the San Antonio River. 2.2 miles of the river run through the park. You may not be aware of that, but the reason San Antonio is where it is is because of the San Antonio Springs and the river. Brackenridge Park's relationship with the river is the story of water and the city's development and the ever encroaching urban development has taken its toll on the health and stability of the river, requiring immediate attention and investment. A much large, much loved park is under great pressure at this time that you might not realize. River banks are collapsing. We need to restore the natural uh, beauty. Also, the banks of the river and the masonry channel, the paths, the trails. Uh, we have leveraged, leveraged funding uh, of uh, 14.5 million from Bear County and 10 million for the Spirit Reach. Second project is $10 million for the Second Garden Theater. Uh, we are requesting 10 million and this will leverage a, 15 million, a $52 million investment. The Second Garden Theater has been very important to the city of San Antonio as a performing arts venue through the years. And we need to uh, move forward <laughs> we need to move forward with its restoration. The proposed plans are for a 7,000 seat theater, a sensitive design that uh, is aware that there are neighborhoods nearby. We will address those in the proposed plans. And um, it is important at this time to bring this back to a part of the life of the city. It can be done. Again, it's one of the, the projects of uh, the entire cultural corridor, which is so important to our city. Together we can do this. So requesting 10 million for Sunken Garden Theater and 2.5 million for the restoration of the Centennial River in the park. Thank you. I'm available to answer any questions as we finish. Hello everyone, I'm Sabina Carr and I'm the Chief Executive Officer of your beautiful San Antonio Botanical Garden, also located in District 2. Every great city has a great botanical garden, and ours is simply no exception. Founded in 1980, the Botanical Garden is a 38-acre museum of plants. It's an oasis that sits right in the heart of the cultural corridor. Our mission focuses on lives, uh, enriching lives through plants and nature. They provide for everything on earth. They are the food we eat. They are the air that we breathe. We couldn't survive without them. At the center of our garden lies one of the most iconic conservatories and glass houses in the nation. It is a modern cutting edge complexes that houses plants from a variety of global ecosystems from around the world, including right here in Texas. The plant kingdom is resilient and it is the most diverse on earth. So we love to take their cue from nature. The botanical garden is simply a place for everyone. We welcome and support the community in many ways. We wanna raise the next generation of environmental stewards who care deeply about nature. We serve 17,000 students annually in a normal year. Half of them are from Title I schools. They're represented from every single school district. Our new strategic plan that takes us through 2026 increases that number by 80%. Access is central to what we do as an organization. And this summer with our Frida Kahlo Oasis Blockbuster Exhibition, we gave away 10,000 tickets. 2,000 of those were redeemed among four key community partners. CC, Pre-K for SA, the Guadalupe Cultural Arts Center, and Fort Sam. Museums for All, we were the first institution in town to adopt that reduced admissions program, uh, which benefits folks who are on SNAP and WIC, and we have more than tripled those admissions over the 18 months since I became the CEO. We're gonna have 225,000 projected visitors at the garden this year, which is a record for the institution. And they come from all over the city. In fact, 70% of them come from San Antonio zip codes, and they also come from every single district. We're made up of 44% Hispanic, 41% Caucasian, and 15% other. 29% of all those visitors who came in 2020 into 2021 are from household incomes of $50,000 or less. District 2 itself represents 19% of our annual visitation, which is significant. And we have 12,000 membership households, which doubled right before the pandemic, showing that being outside and in fresh air in nature is more important than ever. 
Now, a month before I began the job two years ago, a single 400-piece pound of glass fell from the conservatory. It was extremely concerning and not the way you ever want to start a new job. And it just doesn't happen in conservatories around the nation. And I know that after being in this world for so many years. So I immediately called in one of the world's best glass house restorers based out of Columbus, Ohio. And they told us we just had a very significant deferred maintenance issue and it needed to be taken care of. So in the 2022 bond, we respectfully request monies to take care of that deferred maintenance. We've also asked for additional funds for our growing greenhouses that propagate and grow all the plants that support the botanical garden. Thank you so much for your time. Good evening, my name is Tim Murrow. I'm the exec direct, executive director of San Antonio Zoo. The zoo lies in both district one and two. The zoo is 107 years old. We host nearly 1.2 million visitors a year. Uh, nearly 100,000 of those are elementary school field trips. We're home to 700 employees and 600 volunteers and do endangered species work worldwide. We also operate the nature's largest pre preschool at Will Smith Zoo School. The largest, Tim, yes. I'm sorry to interrupt. We're going to need to wrap okay. this one up pretty quickly. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We just need to switch to the, the hemisphere pro, uh, deck. Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you for your volunteer service. We're excited to be here today, and I'm sure you're all excited to look at list of transformational projects for San Antonio. I'm waiting for our slides to load. <laughs> Oh, there we go. My name is Omad Gonzalez. I'm the Chief of Development for Hemisphere. Our vision is to create one of the world's great public places right here in San Antonio. The Hemisphere District is the, old, is the site of the old 1968 World's Fair. We aim to make it a vibrant, mixed-use urban district with three parks. Of those three parks, Yanaguana Garden was delivered in 2015, and it is four and a half acres. Civic Park will be delivered in 2023. It measures nine acres. And we're here to talk today about Civic Park. Civic Park will be delivered in two phases. Phase one is funded by the 2017 bond, as well as dollars leveraged from philanthropy and monetization of lease revenues. That construction will start soon next year, and it'll bring us the Great Lawn, which can have up to 10,000 people standing in concert mode. It will bring us the Promenade, which is a water canal lined with trees in mature trees and shade that connects from Source Plaza to Yanaguana Garden. And what we're asking for today is $18 million from the 2022 bond that we can leverage to bring $2 million of philanthropy. And that will bring us Source Plaza. Source Plaza is approximately the size of Main Plaza. This will be a central gathering location for San Antonio as it's at the corner of Alamo and Market and it'll have a large water fountain that starts to tell San Antonio's water story. Adjacent to it is the Zocalo, which is a large hardscaped area that is filled with umbrellas, chairs, and people, of course. Uh, what we also love about the Zocalo is it doubles as a stage for medium-sized concerts. The mural room allows us to see the beautiful murals that were created in 1968 for the confluence of civilizations. Phase one starts in 22, will be done in 23. Phase two will start in 23 and be done in 2024. To date, we have 3.3 million visitors that 85% of them come from San Antonio. And you can see from this heat map, they visit from all 10 council districts. We aim to make this accessible and sustainable. We are very proud of hosting many events. Uh, these past weekends, you were able to come down to Hemisphere for Luminaria, Diwali, and Muertos Fest, three weekends in a row. It is designed for equitable access for all ages, all incomes, and all abilities. And the economic success resonates from there. We have um, seven times leverage for philanthropic and private events. And once the park is complete, the whole district will be self-sustaining in a financial way. And that will take 
uh, not, not require taxpayer dollars to fund the operations, maintenance, and activation of Hemisphere. Thank you all very much for your consideration. Thank you. Next up, UTSA, followed by uh, Alamo Colleges, the D4 Multi-Generational Center. Great. Well, thank you for this opportunity to provide details and answer questions about the UTSA basketball and volleyball training facility. I'm Lisa Campos, Vice President for Intercollegiate Athletics at UTSA. Much of the information that I will cover is included in the two-sided handout that's being provided right now. UTSA is requesting $10 million from the 2022 City Bond Program for a $29.5 million basketball and volleyball training facility on the UTSA main campus. The university will leverage the city's investment to secure the additional $19.5 million through philanthropic gifts and other sources to build the facility. Public-public and public-private partnerships are essential in developing university athletic facilities Texas public universities cannot use state revenue bonds or permanent university fund for athletic facilities. The athletics department will absorb, absorb all ongoing maintenance and operation costs, an estimated half a million dollars that UTSA would make. This facility will enhance our community's ability to host youth sports, regional and national sporting events, bolstering tourism and the economy in our region. UTSA has a long history of partnering with Visit SA, San Antonio Sports, and others to bring sporting events to the city. In your handouts, you will find a partial list of events that have generated more than a half billion dollars in economic impact to our community. In addition to, our, in, in addition to tourist destination events, UTSA continues to make its facilities available for local youth and adult competitions. Track and soccer facilities on the UTSA Park West Campus and the Convocation Center, baseball and softball facilities on the main campus are frequent stops for local teams. The new, Ro new Roadrunner Athletic Center of Excellence opens additional access for community and competitive events on the main campus. This complex as well as the Park West track and soccer facilities were funded in part by the city of San Antonio. All three facilities have signed agreements with the city for public access. UTSA and the city staff will negotiate a similar agreement for the basketball and volleyball facility. It too will include provisions for public access for organized and competitive events. UTSA has a far reaching commitment to all parts of San Antonio. For example, we are investing $350 million in the downtown area for a new data science building, a new innovation entrepreneurship and career building, and a new partnership with the Southwest School of Art. We have an outstanding partnership with the city at the Alamo Dome for both football games and graduations. We hope to bring the Conference USA football championship game here next month. We look forward to growing the partnership with the city through the new UTSA basketball and volleyball practice facility. And we look forward to answering any questions that you may have. And lastly, this has been a historic football season. Thank you to all the city, the Alamo Dome, everyone who has helped with this year. Thank you. Following Alamo Colleges will be the SA Medical Center Alliance. Yeah. Sorry, we were prepared for Palo Alto next on the list, so I apologize. Yeah, that's that's what I said. Okay. Following Alamo Colleges. Ah, okay. All right. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Catherine Beaumont Doss. I'm fortunate to serve as the Vice President of College Services at Palo Alto College. And I'm here to talk to you a little bit about who we are, the impact of our project in collaboration with District 4, and finally, the leveraged funding. So Palo Alto College has been on the south side of San Antonio serving our community since 1985 for over 35 years. Our mission is to inspire, empower, and educate our community for leadership and success. And we've served over 100,000 graduates throughout our time and existence in the south side. What I want to share with you all this evening is that in the last fall 2020 semester, we served over 11,000 students, and we definitely served those within our, our close area where the institution is located, but we really serve students from across the city of San Antonio and from across Bear County and surrounding counties. Within your presentation, there is an appendix that delineates the constituents served from all of the districts by our natatorium facility that is a joint use 
joint funded facility in collaboration with the city of San Antonio. So you'll see that districts three and four are top servicing, but so are districts two, five, and seven. And again, our services mirror what's uh, demonstrated on the slide here in terms of the students that we serve. So not only do our students come to us from across the city, but we have community members that access our facility from across the city as well. This journey really began in 2019 when District 4 hosted a needs assessment for their constituents, which over 75 attended. At that needs assessment event, the community members really articulated a need for a center that really represented the multi-generational community that was in District 4, providing services such as educational, wellness, and social service support, as well as childcare. And really, they delineated that Palo Alto College was a preferred site location for that center. So District 4 approached us with this amazing information and feedback from our community that we serve. We aligned uh, those conversations with our strategic plan as well as our core mission and really began to vision um, a, a service, a multi-generational center that would support not only the constituents within District 4, but constituents from across the city. And what you see here is a beautiful conceptual design, but it is a $45 million project. Um, and so we would have to scale back on some of the items that the community desired. So what we want to highlight is that within the multi-service center, uh, we are providing not only those, those direct services, but also a safe space. And ultimately, we have amenities and leverage funding totaling over $19 million that we are contributing to the project in partnership with District 4. So I want to thank you all very much for your time this evening. And thank you for the opportunity to share this uh, project with you. So uh, we'll need the Medical Center Alliance. Okay. Uh, yep. I, I get to waste the time. It's okay. on me, not you. Okay, cool. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak to our citizens this evening. My name is Elaine Kearney. I'm a landscape architect, and I'm here this evening presenting on behalf of the San Antonio Medical Foundation and the Medical Alliance, which is the business improvement district for the South Texas Medical Center. Despite the fact that the medical center is an enormous generator of activity to our entire community, it physically lives in District 8, but its impact is felt throughout the entire city. It employs over 60,000 people and generates $7.7 .7 billion in economic revenue. Despite that, the medical center is the number one deficit of parks within a walkable 10-minute um, to distance to a park in the entire city of San Antonio. One of the challenges with the medical center is that most of the land is deed restricted so that it can only be used for medical use. That makes it very challenging to include additional green space. However, we have an exciting proposition. There is a piece of land which is um, along Hebner Creek. It's bounded between Babcock Road, Hebner, and the Floyd Curl Green Street. You can see some of the images on the top. It's full of flourishing wildlife, and because it's in the floodplain, it's not particularly developable. So it's a unique opportunity to create a brand new park that would serve one of the most underserved areas of the entire city. Um, it would also connect into the recently built Floyd Curl Green Street. So the medical center has a proven track record of partnering with the city to complete transformational projects. This is a schematic of what the park could look like. As I mentioned, being primarily in the floodplain, it would be very natural in character, walking paths, uh, picnic tables, benches, a trailhead. One of the things that's really exciting is recognizing the value of this project. The San Antonio Medical Foundation is willing to donate one acre, which is worth $850,000 to create a parking lot and trailhead for this park. Um, the other really exciting thing about this is that it forms the missing link between the Floyd Curl Green Street 
and a larger segment of the Howard Peak Greenway Trail. This was part of the Activate SA presentation, a new Hebner Creek link. So you're getting a lot of bang for your buck with this project. These are just some examples of what the park could look like, very similar to what we'd see along our existing um, Greenway projects. In terms of cost, we think that this project is about $6 million total. Beyond the donation of land that I already mentioned of 850,000, the Medical Center Foundation and Alliance are each willing to contribute $1 million in cash. So we have a total of 2.75 uh, um, in leverage funding. So we're only asking for an additional 3.5. Thank you so much. Thank you. And our last community partner presenter is the Boys and Girls Club. Boys and Girls Club. Good evening. And thank you so much for including the Boys and Girls Clubs of San Antonio in tonight's proposed bond project. My name is Ada Sines and I'm the Chief Executive Officer. The Boys and Girls Clubs of San Antonio provides a safe, engaging space for up to 7,000 underserved youth each year. Our clubhouses are a place where youth ages 6 to 18 receive academic support, social emotional growth, and positive relationships with like-minded peers and staff mentors. We are strategically located in areas where youth need us most. The families we serve are working citizens who need a safe, enriching place for their children to go while they are at work. Many of our families face difficult challenges, such as homelessness, food insecurities, and language barriers. 97% of our members self-identify as minorities, and 93% of our member households qualify for free or reduced price lunch. More than 65% of our kids are being raised by a single parent many times grandmothers trying to do their best, and many more are involved in the foster care system. Aside from these challenges, our youth inspire us with their resiliency to overcome obstacles. Our clubhouses ensure that our vulnerable youth and teens have a safe place to go when they are not in school. With a positive environment, outcome-driven programs, and the supportive Boys and Girls Club staff, our youth will overcome their current trials, graduate high school on time with a plan and an excitement for their future. In fact, despite the academic slide most schools in America faced last academic year, 97% of our regular attending kids showed improvement or maintained grades in math and reading language arts, and 99% were promoted to the next grade level. The project scope for the city bond involves our east side and our Calderon clubhouses, District 2 and District 5. Built in 1973, they are staples of hope for our west side and our east side communities, and essential to the work we do with inner city youth. The facilities have sustained structural damage over the years, as seen in the pictures on the, on the handout. Through our partnership with City Public Works Division and Parks and Rec, multiple assessments have been conducted under the buildings and the surrounding perimeter. Proposed project plans include building shoring, concrete slab stabilization, and construction of storm water swells. The cost is estimated at $3.7 million per facility, and we plan to work with the city and city contractors on the timeline. No leverage funding is available for this part of the project scope, However, additional renovations are necessary to complete the full scope of the needed renovations, and those will require Boys and Girls Clubs to secure leverage funding. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Uh, we're going to move on to the next part of our agenda now, which is citizens to be heard. Um, while I'm speaking, if I could get staff to pull up the uh, zoo's presentation. Um, we, I think Brackenridge maybe used a little more time than they needed to, and we've had a request to see the rest of the zoo presentation. So we'll give uh, Tim two minutes and citizens to be heard. So we have a large number of citizens to be heard signed up this evening, uh, some um, representing groups and some as individuals. And so I'm going to need to, Janet and I are going to need to ask everyone's help to cycle quickly, uh, expediently through this. So. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to call your name. Um, 
and we're going to call the person's name after you. And we would ask that um, you move up and be prepared to take the podium as soon as the, uh, where John's pointing, right over here, at, as soon as the, the previous speaker has finished. Um, so that we can uh, get out of here at a reasonable hour this evening. Um, I will also ask you if you intend to present as a group. Um, I can see there are several groups with multiple people signed up to speak, and we'll allow you three minutes if that's the case. Individual citizens will be allowed two minutes. So with that, um, Tim, could you take the podium and finish your presentation? If I could, just uh, as a visual indicator, as you're up here uh, sharing your comments with the committee, you'll see a green light on the table. Uh, so that means you're good to go. With 30 seconds left, you'll see a yellow light. And when it's red, it, it's, it's time's up. So if that's just a visual cue. The co-chairs will also um, interject when it's time, but just to give you a, a sense of timing visually. Thank you for your gracious time. I work with kids and animals, so I'm used to pivoting all the time. <laughs> A um, little bit more about San Antonio Zoo. It's, we are really a giant outdoor classroom in the center of our city, and we provide the community with a place to get outside, enjoy nature, and teach our children about the species of our planet and the importance of conservation. San Antonio Zoo is now working on phase one of a long-term master plan to improve the zoo's infrastructure, ADA accommodations, safety, and ease of use for all guests and park visitors. These plans include a completely reimagined, redesigned, and expanded zoo entry. San Antonio Zoo guests and visitors to Brackridge Park will also experience improved pedestrian safety and traffic safety. Those improvements include a designated entrance for school groups, improved access for zoo visitors away from and out of the street. If you've been to the zoo on a busy day, you know what I'm talking about. Increase, increased accessibility for guests with disabilities, restrooms to include family restroom with adult changing table, and as a place where San Antonians have gathered to celebrate nature, wildlife, and time with their own families for over 100 years, these critical improvements to our historic infrastructure are desperately needed. This project will be leveraged three and a half to one with the zoo raising $35 million from donors. Thank you for your time on this committee and to our community and for this two minutes you were graciously offered to me. Thank you. Uh, so let's move on to... Let's move on to citizens to be heard. Um, we have um, Fred and Jerry from Friends of McAllister Park. Do you, would you two like to speak as a group? Yes. Yes, okay, so we'll give you uh, three minutes. And following them will be uh, Muddy Bell from District 7. So Muddy Bell, if you'll make your way up there and be prepared to take the podium when they're done. Uh, yep, need the Friends of McAllister Park deck. Sorry, you guys. If you would, as you come up and you're next in line, just highlight if you have a presentation or something that you've shared so we can be ready. Thank you. You have a handout that looks like this. I'm ready. We are the friends of McAllister Park. McAllister Park is in District 9 and 10. At just under 1,000 acres, McAllister Park is the second largest urban in San Antonio. That makes McAllister Park the second largest urban park in the seventh largest city in the entire country. That is a big deal. It is time for McAllister Park to live up to that prestige. We have an opportunity to put McAllister Park at the leading edge of how to connect people to its greatest treasure and resource, urban natural areas. And that is, that is the Restoration Mile. It is our proposal to improve upon the current Mud Creek Greenway plan in McAllister Park. Mud Creek is the last undeveloped parcel of McAllister Park. It is in a floodplain. It is a quiet urban refuge within the city so that suffers years of heavy human impacts without proper stewardship and suffers from antiquated stormwater discharge practices. 
The current plan places approximately an acre of impermeable concrete through an already degraded area. On average, it takes over 10 minutes to access to, by walking from the bordering neighborhoods, and it neglects that the last natural, undeveloped area of McAllister Park is a long-standing cultural treasure. I'm so sorry. The improved plan is a natural surface adaptive wilderness trail. It is an ADA surface pollinator pathway. It is a hybrid route for approximately one mile through McAllister Park. There, this is really touchy. There are advances in wheelchair design that are opening up new ways for people with mobile disabilities to access nature. We propose to create a community supported adaptive wheelchair loan program at McAllister Park recognizing the long-time need to improve inclusivity at McAllister Park. This is a rendition of how we could repair the trail for adaptive access. The pollinator pathway. It, we consider this McAllister Park's land bridge opportunity to support connectivity in thoughtful and innovative ways. This is a mock-up of what that might look like in the power line between two neighborhoods. This is an example of a wildflower meadow restoration in a power line easement. The pollinator pathway supports ADA connectivity for McAllister Park 2000 Oaks. It reduces walking time for area residents to access the greenway by almost 50%. It beautifies the CUPS power line easement and raises the prominence of the neighborhood. It removes approximately five acres of invasive grasses and restores with native grasses and wildflowers. It creates a butterfly, pollinator, a butterfly and pollinator corridor supporting the mayor's monarch pledge. Value proposition. It creates new ways for underrepresented users to enjoy and benefit from the nature in McAllister Park. Thank you. It's, thank um, you. Your time's up. So next, Muddy Bell from District 7. She will be followed by Paula Sullivan from District 1. Paula, if you could please make your way to the front. I was just hoping that if they are already being recommended for funding that they tell us, and if they're not, just so I can distinguish. Yeah, that would be great. Um, for the remaining speakers who are signed up to speak, um, we've had a committee member um, request that the project or um, initiative that you're speaking on identify whether it's currently being uh, recommended for funding or not. Hello, I believe it is recommended for what I'm about to speak. Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am actually honored, uh, blessed, for the opportunity to share my family's personal lived experience, but I also proudly represent thousands of families like mine. My name is Maribel Gardea. I am from District 7. I'm here to give my support for the money allocated to finish the Civic Park at Hemisphere. This is my family. And my son, Vuzeki, that you can see here is in a wheelchair. We've been going to the hemisphere since my family, uh, since my kiddos were young. We used to go to the old wooden playground that everybody holds dear in their hearts. But you know that access was very limited. And to be told, limited access to inclusive parks here in our city is a fact. Since the rede redevelopment started, I noticed significant changes that allow my children to participate and play together. And not only that, but our families can also coexist with other families here in our city. Hemisphere is much more accessible than other parks and has provided more opportunities that our families did not have before. My son loves the disc swings at Yanaguana Garden. Adaptive equipment has always been something hard to find here in San Antonio. And we love that we can drive his chair into the splash pad and participate with all the other children that have that opportunity. We haven't had the opportunity to change him at the park yet, but I also know that there is a universal changing station nearby and one being built at Civic Park, and it's a huge relief for my family and families like mine. I am looking forward to what's to come in Civic Park, and thank you all for the consideration of this project, Vaughn. Thank you. Next up, Next up, Paula Sullivan, followed by Jerry Fields. Jerry, sorry, there was a little mix up. Good evening. 
I'm Paula Sullivan. I am a resident of District 1 and founder and 20-year owner of a business called Carmen's de la Calle in downtown San Antonio. And now I am a partner in the second location of Bombay Bicycle Club at the Hemisphere at the Espinosa House. So this has allowed me to kind of present uh, performances of flamenco, jazz, and other multicultural events um, that have taken place. And in my excitement, I always invite local friends and travelers to Hemisphere. And whether it's just that we're strolling in the park or you know they've come to see an event, they are always amazed as they either discover or rediscover Hemisphere, which is always exciting. You know, the original theme of Hemisphere was about confluence of people, civilizations in America. And I think today Hemisphere represents kind of a new presence of that. Um, Civic Park will expand access to more people. It'll make you feel like that's your park. It allows more people to feel part of the city and part of the experience. Um, there's just a unique feel to Hemisphere, which is the perfect place for a flourishing legacy business like Bombay Bicycle Club to be. It's a unique feel and it continues to be what I call um, maybe a confluence of both local and global human interaction. So um, Hemisphere has given me as a business owner and the performers that I bring in, you know, kind of a new, unique platform to kind of connect with and bring in a more diverse and wider part of the community. So um, I'm here to ask for your definite support of the Civic Park expansion. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. Jerry um, Fields, you're next. You'll be followed by uh, Chris Holder from District 1. Please refer to the packet that we have here. Hi, good evening, committee members. My name is Jerry Fields, and I'm representing San Antonio Bicycle Motocross, which you may have heard referred to more popular abbreviation as BMX. Uh, please refer to your last page. Uh, of your packet for a few photographs of the sport. Uh, we're here to advocate for the construction of, of a BMX course at Pierce Hall Park District 4, okay? BMX is a very popular sport with riders of all different age groups, backgrounds, and ethnicities. In 2008, BMX became an Olympic sport at the Summer Games. We are advocating for the BMX, specifically at Pierce Hall, because it has been part of the park master plan for nearly a decade. In fact, the master plan update for the park was completed in 2012 with input from the community. At that time, feedback was provided favoring inclusion of BMX at Pearsall. Please refer to the back page of your handouts and you'll see that there's an overall site plan for Pearsall. Through several bond cycles, most of the planned amenities have been constructed, including the family fun zone shown in the middle of the plan. Please now refer to the second page of your handouts and you will see a blow up of the bicycle challenge zone, which is presently under bond construction. This zone will soon include bicycle skills area and a pump track, which provide a fun practice area for off-road riders. Please now go to the third page of your handout, which shows a schematic drawing completed by the landscape architect consultant who is responsible for the park master plan and the current improvements underway. The exhibit shows the proposed locations of the BMX course by, by the new pump track, alternatively to the east or west, depending on the site conditions encountered. The next page of your packet will give you an idea of what we, what we could build for about $500,000. As I conclude, I ask the committee to help San Antonio join the ranks of at least a dozen other Texas cities, including Houston, Dallas, Fort Worth, El Paso, and Austin that all have a municipal BMX course. We believe it is, a, it is finally our time to assume a rightful place in this fantastic regional park. BMX will serve riders throughout the entire city and welcome out of town riders from across the state. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, next up, Chris Holder, followed by Faith Radel. Faith, if you could make your way to the front, and if I could remind everybody to um, start off your presentation um, with an identify, identification of the project that you're advocating for and whether or not it's currently recommended for funding. I'm here to talk about Civic Park, which is up for recommendation for funding. My name is Chris Holden. I moved from Stone Oak downtown 
uh, about six years ago on the promise of Civic Park, Hemisphere Park, uh, what was billed as going to be the central park of downtown San Antonio. And I was really excited about the fact that it seemed like San Antonio was really turning the corner and recognizing the importance of developing a vibrant urban core and getting along with this modern thinking. <clears throat> as time went on, though, and they demolished the old Henry B., five years later, Civic Park is still a fenced-off shrubby field to this day. Um, in living downtown at the Alteza, I get the opportunity to interact with people out of state and sometimes even out of the country. Some interesting feedback I've gotten or questions have been, is San Antonio engaging in some sort of strange urban farming experiment? Is San Antonio experiencing systemic economic decline or is it like the Detroit of Texas? This is terrible and we really need to address this issue. Uh, last week, Jeff Speck, who's widely considered the greatest urban planner in the world, was shocked at the state of affairs of the way that the centerpiece of our downtown was looking. <clears throat> so, you know, as we look forward to this, I think that it's really important that we recognize the fact that we have a lot of really great projects that are being discussed, but from a financial standpoint, this is one that sticks out as that it will pay for itself in time. And I think every downtown is putting its first foot forward with its downtown and we should be putting our best foot forward with our downtown. And if we're thinking about the crown jewel of our downtown, it shouldn't be a rhinestone. It should be everything that we can make it to, to pre prevent the, the pull of 69 miles north on I-35 from taking our students that wanna leave from downtown San Antonio and all around the city and promote growth for our city. So I implore you guys to really consider fully funding Civic Park and really Hemisphere Park and Tower Park while you're at it too. Thank, thank you, Chris. Faith, uh, followed by Charlie Lopez. Charlie, if you'd come on up. Hi, my name is Faith Radel, and I'm a resident of District 5. I'm the owner of Galaxy Productions, which is uh, an event productions company, which produces Dia de los Muertos at Hemisphere, uh, popularly known as Muertos Fest. I'm here to support the $18 million in the bond to complete Hemisphere Civic Park, which would be game changing for large scale community events like ours. I say this because as an event producer, um, we look at every space downtown, um, every park, there aren't large parks to do these kinds of events. Um, and why does it matter? Um, just a couple weeks, a weekends ago, uh, we hosted the ninth annual festival and weren't sure what to expect with the crowd, but we had 125,000 people show up uh, over two days. It was a free community event. Um, and while it's amazing to have that gathering, it was amazing to see the artistic gathering. Um, the economic impact is also huge. Um, and I share this because um, having that downtown gathering, gathering space for festivals, events, gatherings matters. Uh, that one weekend, uh, we're still working on the numbers, but we're looking at a $3 million economic impact from that one event. Um, and additionally, we had over 60 locally owned businesses that were selling food, selling beverage, selling art, uh, selling arts. Um, and so all of that matters. It really impacts the community. Um, we're re recognized, the festival is recognized by National Geographic as one of America's top seven fall festivals. Um, and having access to a space like Civic Park would allow us to continue doing program like programming like that and allow other event producers to continue uh, to produce events, quality events uh, that are nationally recognized, but also for our residents here in San Antonio. Thank you, and I hope you will continue to support the Civic Park Project. Thank you. Uh, Charlie Lopez, followed by um, Melissa Arnell. Melissa, if you'd come on up. Hello, my name is uh, Charlie Lopez. I'm here requesting that the city consider and approve funds to develop the parks in the inner city of San Antonio. A big problem I noticed is the lack of innovation of, of the Apache Creek Greenway, Greenway trails. Even with the current development of the San Antonio River Trail, nobody ever turns to the Apache Creek trails. Why? Because it's not developed. There's no water flow, no excitement. Uh, it's basically a sidewalk and a ditch. As a resident of 78207 and an avid biker rider, I would like to see a bike park that connects to the Greenway. A bike park includes ramps, pump tracks, 
and most important, an innovative way to engage children and adults to exercise on the renovated greenway. Just a little bit of background on why I'm interested in bringing a green a, a bike park to 78207. During the pandemic, 78207, like most of the city, we lost our parks, playgrounds, and rec centers. Kids didn't have nothing to do. I wanted something that's fun to do with my son. I discovered that San Antonio has several areas for mountain biking. However, I had to travel 30 to 45 minutes outside of my home to enjoy these parks. And I asked myself why only affluent communities have access to these trails of San Antonio's. Why is it that you need to travel outside the inner city to experience something as cool as a bike trails when we could bring the trails to the inner city in a form of a bike park? I want kids from the west side to experience all the things kids in other areas are not, that don't. Not just basketball and soccer, I want them to feel the thrill and excitement of mountain biking. The children of 78207 deserve more. There are so many options of where to place this park. And um, I brought pictures, I didn't know we didn't have something to air it on. So I just have one copy. Yeah, you can pass it around. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Um, Good following, afternoon. Following Melissa will be um, Mara Bobbitt. Good afternoon. I am here representing the Greater Love Multi Generational Center, along with a, a, several of our members and uh, supporters of that organization. Greater Love Multi-Generational Center was part of the 2017 bond. Uh, at that time, we were awarded uh, $2 million. Also uh, with that, uh, we were uh, asked to leverage $1 million and donate the land. We did our part on uh, donating the land and we did raise the million dollars to get our project uh, to fruition. However, due to COVID, due to increased cost of construction and materials, we are here this afternoon to appeal to you for $1 million for gap funding to complete our project. Our bond request again for the 22 bond is $1 million. The multi-generational center will offer several programs, a senior center, a pre-K program, which will follow the state uh, pre-K guidelines from the Texas Education Agency. Our seniors will be uh, afforded many opportunities for arts, crafts, aerobics, and things of that nature so that they can remain uh, active and independent. And also uh, the center will have a benefit not only to District 2, but throughout the city of San Antonio. Jobs will be created. We will expand educational opportunities. So I'm asking you humbly, we are asking that you please consider $1 million to complete the fruition of the Greater Love Multi-Generational Center. Thank you. Okay, following. Um... Jim, can, Elena, Mara. Can, I, can I just ask that last lady, is that a new ask? Yeah. 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 So that's a new ask? That's, that's a yes, it's a new ask. Thank you, sir. Okay, Mara, just a moment. Um, following Mara will be Amelia Valdez. If I can ask staff to assist her, um, she has some visual aids. Um, that she'll need some assistance setting up. Go ahead, Mara. Thank you. Good evening. I came here today to speak in favor of the inclusion of the Sunken Garden Theater, um, which has been recommended. I was born in San Antonio, but I moved away at 18 with no intention of ever returning. After a decade of searching, I made the conscious decision to come back, take responsibility for my home, and be a part of creating its future. I'm not alone in this. Lots of millennial chickens are coming home to roost. San Antonio is growing, and if we want to preserve what makes San Antonio unique, we have to act now. I could go on about why an amphitheater of this size in the heart of the city will add to our quality of life, but I'm here for a different reason. Full disclosure, I am Lynn Bobbitt's daughter, who you, who you heard from tonight, um, speaking on behalf of Brackenridge Park Conservancy. I know the comments I'm about to make are going to embarrass her, but I feel strongly that this perspective needs to be shared. My mother serves as the executive director of BPC, and they are seeking to develop the theater. For her entire life, my mother has fought tirelessly for the bones of this city. 
Growing up, when I went anywhere with her, she acted as a de facto tour guide, filling my head up with stories of the battle she and my grandmother before her undertook to, to keep our historic sites and structures from being replaced by soulless developments. We aren't Dallas, and for that, I am eternally grateful. Sunken Garden Theater will not be ignored forever. Unless it falls into complete disrepair and is raised to the ground, it will be developed eventually, now by BPC or in the future by someone else. I came here today to tell you all that if the theater is going to be developed, you want my mother to be the one doing it with BPC. Before her current role, she worked for the late Jim Cullum and also considered him a dear friend. He lived in the historic River Road neighborhood and she loses sleep at night worrying over what he would think of this development, particularly the traffic plan. I'm telling you, this is who you want developing this theater. Again, I believe it will happen either way, and chances are you, go you aren't going to find anyone else with the ghost of one of San Antonio's legendary musicians complaining in her ear. I want a theater that will reflect the unique personality and culture of San Antonio. No one cares more about this city or this park than Lynn Bobbitt. BPC cares about what the community wants for this space. They will actually listen to public comments and be open-minded and do their best to build something representative of this city something uniquely San Antonian that couldn't exist anywhere else in the world that we can all be part of and proud of every step of the way. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Amelia. <laughs> Following Amelia Valdez from the Historic West Side uh, Residents Association will be uh, Patsy Inglet. Okay, put it down a little bit because we got a photo. Okay, we, we do have a present. Okay, let me tell you, what you're about to see is very disturbing. <laughs> okay, uh, at the top we got the, uh, uh, the, the pool locker, but let me, let me announce the park. Cassiano Park is one of the parks on, on uh, District 5, which is the home of Councilwoman Terry Castillo. Uh, the park has been, gone, has been uh, taken away, as far as money was taken away from it, $700,000. And we have pool lockers that actually are being used as storage. Uh, we got women's and, 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 and we, we got a swimming pool that if you go to the website, that's the pool that's on the website, which has been more updated, okay? Here's the outside pool, which is losing paint and, and, and it's losing, it's, it's just been disrespectful, right? Um, second page, please. We got the boys changing room, which has no roof. And I remember when I was little, when we used to throw things over to each other or they would be picking out. Uh, they were, yeah, they would go over uh, each other. Um, we got the pavilion. That box on the top is the lighting part of it. Um, and at night, it it's, doesn't have any lights, but uh, we, we do what the best that we can. The basketball court, if you go to the website at Cassiano Park, that's what's on there, but it's been updated. It's kind of like, how come they're not updating our information when it's been updated already? The bathroom. I want to thank Parks for updating our bathrooms just this morning with three stalls for the women and two stalls for the men. And I want to thank Councilwoman Terry Castillo for doing that for us this morning. She updated me on that. And I'm really happy that we'll be able to... Uh, uh, do so, at least we can go to the restroom, right? Um, at least in a dignified way. So Cassiano Park has been in San Antonio for a long, long time. Uh, its uh, pool is as old as uh, 1969. Uh, I hear a lot of money out there. Uh, we just want at least five million, at least to give this park some kind of dignity, okay? We go to the next page. This is a comparison. You probably can't really see, but I gave you the handouts. We got Amendorf with the uh, nice playground and the uh, nice rubber floor. We got the canopies over at Amendorf uh, pool. And of course the beautiful uh, Hemisphere Park. I have a lot of friends there. So uh, there are uh, splash pads. Um, I, I just want to end up by saying that taking $700,000 away from a park that's been a part of history is really, really sad. And we just want to make sure that uh, we give to those who deserve to. I want to thank the UTSA Westside Center for making these beautiful copies for me. We really appreciate that. And again, thanks to Parks for uh, updating our bathrooms at least. Thank you so much. Cassiano Park, friends of Cassiano Park. Okay, Patsy, Patsy Inglet is next, followed by Britt Coleman. Britt, if you'll make your way up, please. 
Hi, I am Patsy England, and I'm on the board of Mitchell Lake Audubon Center, and I'm here to advocate for including Mitchell Lake Audubon Center in the 2022 bond issue. You have at your place a little blue card with a QR code and a big um, booklet like this that will give you more information than what I have time to tell you. And a committee meeting a member at the last meeting at last week said this project is not just a District 3 project, and I agree with that. Upgrading the access and amenities at Mitchell Lake Audubon Center will benefit the whole city, the whole region, and the state. Mitchell Lake is already rich in birds and bird habitat. In fact, we're the birdiest Audubon Center of the 41 Audubon Centers, and we, it ain't bragging if it's true. So we already attract bird watchers and nature lovers from all over the state, the nation, and the world to San Antonio. And these visitors enrich us in many ways. However, access to the best bird places at Mitchell Lake are sometimes closed due to the state of the roads there in wet weather. And so people who have traveled long distances to come and visit are sometimes disappointed, and that's too bad. But of course, this project is also very important to District 3 itself. This area is poised to experience rapid growth in the next five years. And this is going to make the open spaces and nature trails at Mitchell Lake even more valuable to the people who already live there or who are moving in. The facilities at Mitchell Lake, is that 30 seconds already? Oh my goodness, are not up to par with other areas. And so we think they should be. And we ask humbly that you include this wonderful resource that we have here in the city as part of Bird City, Texas that San Antonio earned in 2021. And we appreciate this opportunity to be able to ask for that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, following uh, Britt will be uh, Jeff Moore with SATX Social Ride. Hello, my name is Britt Coleman, president of Bear Audubon Society. Thank you for providing the opportunity to speak tonight for adding Mitchell Lake bond to the bond issue. It's currently not funded. In the first meeting uh, for this committee last Tuesday, the eligibility and scoring criteria for the bond projects was briefly reviewed. Mitchell Lake project ticks all of the eligibility boxes and with rational examination of details, scores a perfect 100 on the selection criteria for a good bond project. For equity, Mitchell Lake is located in a historically underserved area, District 3. For connectivity, Mitchell Lake provides physical connectivity by integrating in with the Greenway trails, as well as educational connectivity for educating people on nature. Public health and safety. Enhance public health by providing hiking access to over 1,200 acres of wetlands, forests, and grasslands. Resiliency, by providing community educational activities and uh, reducing flood risks as well. Um, and then leveraged funds and feasibility. So at this point, we don't have leveraged funds, but the feasibility of the project we're asking for $12 million is that the projects have been prioritized. There are a number of sub projects and so any amount of funding would be um, useful and good things could happen. So Mitchell Lake scores very high in all five categories. And unfortunately this time doesn't allow me to go into great detail on uh, the charting of how Mitchell Lake scores. So we'd like to invite all of the committee members out to Mitchell Lake so we could show you what the value of this um, property is and explain in greater detail how this project meets all the criteria. You'll find a QR code on your desk that gives you more information as well. And thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Hey, uh, so Jeff, before you begin, let's go ahead and have um, the folks from Bike San Antonio line up after you and then uh, Karen from Black Girls Do Bike following Bike San Antonio. All right, thank you all. Um, I'm here to speak up on behalf of um, the Greenways, and it is a recommended funded project. I want to talk about a couple points. The first, uh, the importance of what local communities get out of uh, Greenways and linear parks, things like that. I want to talk about disparities within the city, specifically Greenway infrastructure. 
Uh, I also want to talk about um, health disparities within the city and our social vulnerability index. And if we can, if I have time, recap all that. So talking about the importance of what local communities get out of greenways, linear parks, it is health. It is um, physical health, mental health, and emotional health. Um, and that's everything from diabetes to heart disease, obesity, substance abuse, depression, loneliness, and PTSD. Things like cycling, jogging, and walking are well documented in medical journals uh, as treatment for all these ailments and conditions. So I want to make it clear that the greenways are not about just recreation. It's about real concrete um, things that help out communities across the city. And I want to talk about disparities within the city and specifically greenway infrastructure and what, how we need to complete this ring, the Howard Peak ring, uh, to provide connectivity and accessibility to all of San Antonio. The north side of San Antonio, when you look at the city as a map, the northern half of San Antonio, uh, the Leon Creek has 22 miles of, of, of greenway. Uh, Salado Creek on the northeast side has tw over 20 miles. Start looking on the south side and you'll notice on the southeast side, we have uh, seven miles of the most beautiful parts of Salado Creek, but it's isolated. It's not connected to the north and it's not connected to the south. Um, in the southeast quadrant, Salado Creek is still not connected to the Mission Reach. Um, on the southwest quadrant, it's just not connected at all. Now, three of the four Activate SA projects, Activate SA projects that, that we're promoting address connectivity in neighborhoods and accessibility to the southern half of San Antonio and inclusion into all the existing parts of that Howard Peak Greenway Ring. Southeast, we're talking about the Brooks Campus connection, which would connect Salado Creek to the Brooks Campus, which gives us connection to the Mission Reach of San Antonio that connects directly Mission, Vie uh, Mission Viejo uh, Neighborhood Association to the, uh, the ring. Now, on the southwest side, we have the Port of San Antonio connection that will bring council districts five, seven, six into four and complete help complete that southwestern ring of, uh, of the Howard Peak system. I want to talk a little bit about the social vulnerability index. Um, and if you look at San Antonio north to south, there's a huge difference. Um, the south side is basically a lot more vulnerable than the north side. All of these projects will help bring us, it will bring these communities together. Um, we're bringing opportunities for health, resilient, and, and complete communities. Come out of time. I want to also say that Speak Up SA, SA Speak Up is a, a website we need to go to. You can make your, um, your observations, your recommendations on that so everybody can see that. So Speak Up SA. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jeff. Mike San Antonio, Brian, are you going to speak for the group? Um, I can, I'm going to speak uh, particularly about a project that I'm very excited about, the Flyway. I'm Brian Martin from Bike San Antonio. Um, the Flyway is a recommended project for this bond, uh, this bond cycle. Um, so real quick, the uh, San Antonio Linear Greenways, uh, they, they have uh, been really essential uh, to the cycling community in the last decade. Um, I'm particularly excited about the Flyway because my personal experience is if I want to get downtown, I have to use Broadway. And the flyway would essentially connect McAllister Park along Wetmore all the way down to the Quarry Market. And then from the Quarry Market, it will connect through Almost Park and then eventually, hopefully, the Spirit Reach Trail, which could take me all the way downtown. But this isn't just for me, it's for my community. Um, I live in the Douglas MacArthur area, and there's uh, a real potential to get somewhere around 5,500 people within a 10 minute walk to McAllister or into um, other parts of downtown. Um, connecting the flyway is a direct alignment with the SA tomorrow plan for the wet, for Wetmore Road. Um, I can highlight some of those, uh, resilience, public health, equity, uh, and the reason I think equity is a big one because this does this project in particular does connect three districts, which would be um, eight, nine, and sorry, uh, ten, nine, and and one. Um, and there is really no way to get south or north in the in the core of the city. Um, so uh, we're really also pushing just that we need to maintain that uh, full 
110 million dollars for these for the trails um Uh, and also, uh, all, for all the cyclists here, if you, if like, just like Jess said, if you can go ahead and go to um, the SA Speak Up, Speak Up SA, uh, to their to their website and fill out. Uh, if you get, because you're probably not going to get a chance to come up here, but if there's something you want to the to for the committee to hear, that's your opportunity. Um, I'm going to go ahead and yield over to one of our next uh, members. Go ahead, Alvin. Can I can I ask a quick question? Can I ask a quick question about the flyway or no? Uh, we're holding questions until oh, the sorry. end. Okay. You've got 30 seconds remaining. Thank you. I'll be brief. Uh, my name is Alvin Holbrook. I'm a recent transplant from Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, and as someone who's lived in a lot of different places, I have learned the value of something called placemaking. And placemaking is the idea of building public spaces that are worthwhile and equitable to people. Um, we know that every part of San Antonio could use better placemaking. Um, fortunately, there's a bond available that allows every district to improve their placemaking. Um, and that is, the, uh, is, that is providing full funding to the linear greenways trails. Um, doing that um, gives everyone the opportunity to shape their greenway to the needs of the people around them. I'm afraid we're out of time. Thank yep. you. Karen. Fo following Karen will be Seema from TDTP. Seema, so if you can make your way up. Good evening. I'm Karen Leha, and I'm a Shiro or ride leader with Black Girls Do Bike San Antonio. We're a national organization, and we have over 80 chapters worldwide. We were established just in 2013, and it's turned into a movement. Just in COVID alone, we've increased our membership probably by 100 ladies. Um, so I am in favor of the 110 million um, to complete the rest of our Greenway Trail. Um, my interest is in the part from Medina to Military Highway. That's the part that's missing to get back to my house. Um, the ladies, <laughs> we did a century, which is 100 miles in one day. We went out 50 and came back 50, but I want to go all the way around. So I, we are in favor of it. <laughs> also, we're very appreciative to have the Greenway Trail System because we have a lot of beginners, um, ladies who are just starting out riding from childhood. Now they're adults. So the Greenway Trail System keeps them out of the streets and the cars and you know, all those scary dogs that are in the neighborhood. So the Greenway Trail System is a really good starting point for our beginners. Um, I appreciate the funding for additional maintenance, um, keep maintenance on the trails. Um, the city's doing really good about maintaining them um, and continue to do that for us as well. And we are in favor of it. Thank you. Following uh, Simon will be um, Kyle Del Vecchio. Go ahead. How's it going? Uh, good evening. Uh, thank you for the time. Um, I have a, I grew up in the city um, over uh, off of uh, the Edgewood district. Um, and fast forward 20 years in the military, retired, uh, found mountain biking, and uh, that's kind of helped me um, go get through some of my issues. But in doing that, I've been able to explore a lot of the city that I didn't know existed. Um, let me reverse a little bit. This is kind of pretty much anything with linear greenways, Opie Schnabel, any of the bonds that are going forward towards that. It's really the bigger picture of, of which, what I'm after is, I've seen uh, cycling, mountain biking in general, um, break down barriers from different uh, people, different ethnicities, backgrounds, and you can find that common ground of uh, I've rode with doctors, lawyers, people, plumbers, anything like in the city. And it's a, a place where uh, people can thrive and communicate. And actually there's a lot of uh, healing that goes on. Um, people, it's just an icebreaker that people just start sharing things and they're just a lot more light and spirited uh, after the ride than, and than before the ride. It's an icebreaker. And I feel if we can foster this community and it, I know there are trails there, but if we can kind of grow this, um, it would uh, exponentially, as you can hear, 
hear other speakers talk about the mental health aspect of it, the um, uh, the uh, cardiovascular health, uh, uh, working out. Uh, it doesn't even feel like a workout, really. But um, through that, I've uh, right with a nonprofit group called the Dirt Therapy Project, and it's a group of veterans that get together. We take our other veterans out. This city is kind of you see signs that says military city everywhere. Um, and we, if we could foster that and move this project forward, um, that would uh, exponentially just integrate not only veterans, but also the people that are from around here and people that are transplanted from other cities and really grow this community in ways that we can't even imagine. So I just ask you, when you consider anything going forward, to more so don't look at it as spending money, but more so as an investment in our community and uh, our way of uh, going forward for others to experience us and our, you know, our, the, what we're building here. That's, that's all I got. Thank, thank, thank you for your Appreciate comments. Um, following Kyle will be Hector Santos. Thanks for having me and uh, sorry for my casual appearance. I actually rode my bike here on one of the fabulous greenways. So thank you for that. But I'm actually here in support of uh, mountain biking because that is specifically what I do. 95% of the time, and you've already heard all the health benefits of cycling. We all know about that. Uh, I'm here to talk about more of the tourism aspect and specifically the OP Schnabel Bike Park. Um, I love our trails, but I think we would all agree we don't have anywhere we can actually go practice jumps, bigger features, things like that. I just got back from a 15-state road trip, and uh, I went to Terre Haute, Indiana to ride a bike park there, and I never thought I'd be envious of Indiana, but... They had a great bike park, and um, I would love to see that here. And as we all know, it snows in the mountains in the winter. There's thousands of mountain bikers that would love to come down here and ride world-class trails and a bike park here in San Antonio, where it's nice and warm in the winter. Uh, so that's, that's kind of what I am here for. And yeah, I would just love to see more progressive trails here in San Antonio. I won't even use the whole two minutes. Thank you. Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Fo following Hector will be Terrence White. Good evening, y'all. Thank you, for, uh, all of you uh, members, for volunteering your precious time to be here to hear us, to try to convince the city to give us the money that we need for our projects. My name is Hector Santos. I am the president of Edgewood Youth Athletic Association, EYAA located in District 6, Cuellar Park. It is an economical, challenging community of our city. We are a nonprofit organization for over 45 years serving youth ages three year olds through 14 year olds, boys and girls, uh, in our almost 30 year sport complex that resides inside Cuellar Park. We have baseball, softball, football, soccer, cheerleading year round, all the way around, never stops. Uh, we have close to 500 kids participating in our programs. We are, invest, uh, we are investing in our youth by getting them involved in team sports. Our kids are learning skills and activities such as building self-confidence, teamwork, physical activities, and just having fun, to name a few. We are requesting our city to invest some of uh, our bond money to improve our sport complex by expanding our current parking lot to include the open area adjacent to Lance Street and 36th Street to better suit our greater our great parking needs. We at this time we only have 44 parking spaces and it's used for our complex and the, the people that use the jogging and walking trails. We are also asking for two more fields to be added to our complex uh, to meet our demand. Our city uh, other cities much smaller than San Antonio, as in Shirts, Texas, Bernie. Texas, Medina Valley and Castorville, Corpus Christi, Portland, Texas, just to name a few, have beautiful complexes built by the city, run by nonprofit like our organization for our youth. San Antonio has many sport complexes for adults, but very few for our youth. It is time for us to, as a city, to invest in our youth by providing more sport complexes and improving the few that we have. Mr. S Mr. Santos. I'm afraid we're out of time. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, so next up will be Terrence White, followed by Stan Richardson. But I want to pause for a moment. My co-chair, Jeanette, would like to. 
Thank you for your patience. I appreciate it. Committee members, I want to call to your attention and do a quick check-in. It is 7.30. We have approximately 20 plus minutes of public hearing, public comments that we would like to take. So I just want to advise you as you are listening to these last few presentations to please take notes. What we will attempt to do is to submit these questions to staff at the end of the public hearing today, we will not have nearly 10 minutes to discuss. So I'm just making you aware of it so that you can be taking questions as you are listening to the last few presentations. I appreciate your patience and we appreciate all those that are here this evening. Thank you, sir. Terrence, Good. go ahead. Thank you. Good evening. Welcome. Um, thank you for welcoming, and welcoming me into your presence. I'm Terrence White. I'm a native born San Antonian. I'm a veteran and I am the CEO and the Bishop of Word of Deliverance Ministry Incorporated and the founder, one of the founders. We were founded in 1999 in, in uh, uh, Alamo Heights. We are geared as a ministry to helping others in this community. We have always done that and we hope to continue to do that, but we are in need of assistance. We have purchased a property that we have already contributed upwards of $200,000 in repairing this property in the Brook City Base area. We are geared towards educating our students in the, in the city of San Antonio. We're pro-literary literally uh, literary uh, design. We want to increase uh, our children's viability in the community for educational needs that will carry San Antonio into the next century. We also are geared towards our senior citizens. We hope to complete our project so that we can establish a daycare center for Alzheimer's patients, have a senior citizen sit, uh, 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 daycare, uh, excuse me, activity center that they can come to, get a good meal, and enjoy each other's company without fear. Uh, we also want to make ourselves available for shelter in time of storm. So. You know, this is what we need you for. We need you to help us continue to do this. We offer scholarships to students. I uh, founded this because we wanted to help people in San Antonio. I am from uh, Dignity. Our office was uh, is in District 2. We operate out of District 3. We look to complete the project, but we're in need of approximately $2.5 million to do so. This will help us uh, complete the construction, begin and complete the construction of an Alzheimer's respite center. Thank you, Mr. White. Thank you. Um, Stan Richardson next, followed by Paula from Bombay. Good evening. Thank you very much for the opportunity to present today. Uh, what I'm here to do is try to ask, uh, I'm the vice president of the San Antonio Softball Association. We run all of the youth and adult softball uh, within the San Antonio area at both Alva Joe Fisher and Kennedy complexes. Both of those complexes were built in 1975 and 1980. There's a lot of upgrade that needs to be done to these ballparks for our youth and our adults. That's what I'm here to ask that you please consider any bond money that is available. We would like to obtain that, obtain those funds, I'm sorry. Uh, and put it back into use for those complexes to be upgraded to current good facilities for our youth and adults to use year-round. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, it looks like Paula had already spoken. So uh, Rick Trevino, you're up next, and you're going to be followed by uh, Martin Gutierrez. Hey, folks. So I've already been at two of these, and I got to say that you guys are on the bond committee that actually gets attended by the public. So give it up for everybody and like actually pay attention. Now, my motion is about transparency. I'm going to start off by telling you who I am. Uh, I used to be a teacher. I taught at Sam Houston for a while. Hey, Judy, I see you right there. She helped fund a couple of my projects at the ISD Foundation. I'm now a law student in my last year at St. Mary's. I'm going to be a criminal defense attorney. Now, why am I telling you that kind of background? Because I think it tells you a little bit about myself and how I see the world. You see, a lot of the people here are here because they care about their city. And all they know about you is your name and the district you represent. 
And that's not a lot, right, folks? So I have a simple suggestion that you guys provide to your co-chairs to be made public. Very simple thing. Your employer and your job title. Now let's talk about transparency. I've already made this motion twice. In the public, you might find this interesting. You know that the other boards didn't think that the public deserved to know that. One guy by the name of uh, Al Ariola was very vocal from, uh, I think he was from District 4. He uh, wasn't, he didn't think that the public needed that information. Turns out that Al's the president and CEO of the South San Antonio Chamber of Commerce. That's pretty, you know, re relevant, I think. Another guy, a um, guy by the na name of Dan Rossiter, uh, was very vocal about this motion as well. He turned out to be on the board of the Brooks Air Force City Base. You know, I think it would help you guys under at least understand where your colleagues are coming from if you knew a little bit about them. Just like I told you a little bit about myself, me being a teacher, me being an attorney, or hope to be, I think you can kind of get where I'm coming from. And the public wants to know that this committee's on a level. So I hope this is the first committee that steps up to the plate and all these people here will get an opportunity to see who you work for and what your job title is. Is that really that controversial? All right, folks, thanks. Thank you. Um, Elise from um, following Martin. I'm sorry, I can't read the last name. Elise following Martin. Yep. Okay. Good evening. For the record, San Antonio Hispanic Chamber of Commerce is not testifying in support of any specific projects, just our general support for investments in citywide and regional projects. Good evening, members of the Parks, Recreation, and Open Spaces 22 Bond Committee. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. My name is Martin Gutierrez, and I'm the Director of Public Policy and Business Advocacy for the San Antonio Hispanic Chamber. We are comprised of more than 900 members, mostly small, locally owned businesses. We pride ourselves on five pillars of success, small business, economic development, international trade, education, and leadership. On behalf of our more than 900 members, I'm here to express our support for investments in citywide and regional projects that make San Antonio a desirable destination for current residents, employers, entrepreneurs, and future workforce. We strongly believe that investments in citywide and regional projects will improve our quality of life and foster economic development. According to a recent report in the Maine Policy Review, investments in improving a community's quality of life can create a virtuous cycle. High quality places attract workers, which attract employers, which in turn attract more investments and jobs. Quality of life factors and characteristics now more than ever play a key role in decision-making processes of businesses looking to relate, relocate or expand. In a highly competitive market for talent and businesses, it's important that we enhance our quality of life and place in San Antonio. Investing in citywide regional projects in San Antonio will help make San Antonio the best place to live, work, play, and do business. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Alicia, I'm sorry for butchering your name. You'll be next. Uh, following you will be uh, Pauline Bershak. My name is Alicia Garlock. I'm a wildlife advocate. I'm asking for the creation of a citizen advisory committee to oversee the actions of our parks and recreation and all city parks with input from uh, environmental groups or wildlife advocates to show transparency. Because as a citizen of San Antonio, what I've watched over the last four years is the destruction of nature through the removal of trees and vegetation in our city parks. Unbeknownst to the public is the removal of trees and vegetation meant to deter migratory egrets and herons from nesting, birds that migrate hundreds and over thousands of miles to our city to nest. Forced into urban areas by disturbance to their habitat as our populations grow and climate change impacts water sources along their migration routes. The removal of trees in our city parks especially, sorry, impacts all wildlife, including us. We need trees to filter pollution and give us oxygen. As our climate changes, we need more trees, not less trees. I would like to ask that this bond project or you all consider that we not use the USDA's wildlife services in all our city parks because the plan is, according to an email uh, obtained through a FOIA, is that they move their actions to Brackenridge City Parks along with Woodlawn and Elmendorf Lake Park. 
It would include the destruction of viable eggs, which are embryos, live birds, and possibly the killing of adult birds in our city parks. Without city, or sorry, without public inclusion in these decisions, these activities will impact not only wildlife, but the public as a whole. Sorry, I forgot my glasses. <laughs> According to, um, Okay, I got that. Sorry, I can't. I can't read. I didn't bring my glasses. Uh, the Alicia, if you could wrap it up in one sentence, okay, please. Okay. Yeah. Assaulting the, our, our species in our parks oh, affects all of us. I'm out of time. But if you'd like to learn more, Friends of the Migratory Birds in San Antonio on Facebook. Thank. Thank you very much. Uh, Pauline will be followed by Charlene Mass from UTSA. This is my first time doing something like this. So my name is Doris Pauline Pichel. I'm actually from District 2 between Ritterman Road and Harry Warsbach. I want to talk about the safety. I want to talk about the improvement of the Greenway project. I live near Salado Creek Trails. I'm worried about safety. I've known in the past year there's been a few dead bodies found in the Creekway. I want safety to know that, that I don't find dead people in my greenway and know that it might be a missing person or a murder suspect, mur someone that was murdered or someone from, sadly, from the unhoused population. I want to know that I am safe in my greenway trails. I don't want to be worried about my safety, having to carry brass knuckles, a rape whistle, pepper spray all the time because I am a woman. And I want to be safe when I go to these public spaces, especially whatever time of the day and night. I should not be worried where I go and where I'm at. And I want to have this Greenway funded. I don't want it to be cut back. And for the people that I've heard that said that the rich folks who live in gated communities, who live in gated communities and are nice and fancy schmancy, I'm not fancy schmancy. I live next to a fucking ghetto. And I want you to know that I want to be safe. I want to have my voice heard. I want to have the same opportunities as people on the north side, over in the Stone Oak area and Alamo Heights. I want the people in the east side and the west side to get their funding, to get the parks that need to be funded, need to be fixed, need to be taken care of due to racism that's existed in this city. And just so you know, Hemisphere Park was founded by racism. 20,000 people were displaced. German, Black, and Mexican-Americans were forced to leave due to eminent domain. And I want you to know that we need to fix this systemic racism that's occurring in this city. And most people don't realize it, but it is occurring. If you go to the apartment complexes near downtown, it is for rich folks. I cannot afford most of these places. I am not rich. Hey, hey Pauline, this is great, but we're but out yes. of time. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you. Um, following Charlene will be Colleen Wagespach. Uh, good evening. I'm here to talk about the UTSA basketball and volleyball practice facility, which is recommended for funding. My name is Charlene Mass. I'm a junior at the University of Texas at San Antonio, and I'm a member of the UTSA women's basketball team. I would like to speak in support of the $10 million city staff recommendation for a new UTSA basketball and volleyball practice facility. My sister is also a member of the UTSA women's basketball team. We grew up in the East San Antonio and attended school in the Converse and Judson School District. Throughout our childhood, Sign and I played on teams coached by our dad. His biggest concern always was finding a court time for practices and games. The multi-court facility at Mission Conception in South San Antonio was tremendous when we could get court time. Teams from throughout the city of Mission Conception used this gym for practice and games. When we reached high school, we looked forward to UIL playoff games in the Convocation Center at the UTSA main campus. That's where we practiced and played games today. The Convocation Center was built 46 years ago to accommodate physical education classes, as well as intercollegiate athletics, graduation, and community events. It has five courts, three on the lower level and two upstairs. 
moving our men's and women's practice to a new facility with free court time in the Convocation Center. More young people from throughout San Antonio will have an opportunity to complete to compete on the Convo floor. Hopefully more frequent visits on the UTSA main campus will free court time and missing conception and other facilities throughout the city. I ask for your favorable consideration of this request, not just for UTSA student athletes, but all student athletes throughout San Antonio. Thank you for this opportunity to share my thoughts. Thank you, thank you. Following uh, Colleen will be Jenny Carnes. Thank you, I'm here to talk today about the $26 million in active ASA projects. Although I'm not speaking for them, uh, if they are not in compliance with what was originally proposed on the Howard Peak Greenway Trail system. Um, so I may need security to walk me out tonight. <laughs> um, Activate SA, like Connect SA, it, the Connect SA program, which was approved by voters last year, is focused on transportation. These projects are, most of these projects are essentially complete streets with consisting of sidewalks and bike paths separated from the busy roadway by a median. These projects may have merit, but be, should be funded with transportation, not park dollars. Proponents say these projects will improve pedestrian safety on Vision Zero corridors, will improve roadway quality on eight uh, F-rated streets, and, and uh, but that may be so, that indicates they are transportation goals, not park goals. The requested 26 million will fund construction of only one of these projects, al along with the planning on future projects. Funding, therefore, the Parks Department is going to be looked to for future funding on future bond programs. Additionally, the Parks Department will be responsible for maintaining these street side sidewalks and parks or bike paths in perpetuity out of their budget. I urge you to vote tonight to remove the transport from the, these transportation oriented activate SA projects, which were not, which are not in line. Some of them are in line with the original Howard Peak Greenway trail system um, from the funds that are proposed, which will allow your committee to redirect funding so that residents in all districts can engage in recreation and activities in a Thank natural you, environment. Thank you. Okay, following uh, Jenny Carnes, we'll have uh, Pedro Cortez. Good evening, I'm here on behalf of the UTSA project that was already presented. My name is Jenny Carnes. Uh, I am the Senior Vice President and Chief Operating Officer of San Antonio Sports, and I also have the privilege of serving as the Executive Director of all of the NCAA Championships and Final Fours that come to the community. As Lisa mentioned earlier, we have a 25-year-plus long-standing relationship with UTSA that has brought numerous NCAA Championships and Final Fours, resulting in millions of dollars. We will top that half-a-billion-dollar mark in March. Uh, most notably, the 2018 Men's Final Four that brought $185 million into the city and really was the main reason why we renovated the Alamo Dome uh, a couple years ago. One of my main jobs at San Antonio Sports is bringing sporting events to the city that drive tourism and leave a lasting legacy for our community. As we say, heads in beds and butts in seats, and that drives dollars to the hot fund that in turn funds other projects. That part of my job gets increasingly more difficult every year as we compete against other cities that have better and far more sports facilities. Even smaller markets such as Round Rock and Frisco are hard to compete with. We had a role in bringing partners and projects together for the 2008 County Bond Program that resulted in 13 new sports facilities, one of those being the start of UTSA's Park West Complex. What we've learned since then is that the most successful venues have been those in partnership with universities. Contributing to UTSA's basketball and volleyball athletic training facility essentially gives us opportunities like Mission Concepcion. It frees up court space in the convo, Combined with the new facility and the recreational facility, that gives us more basketball and volleyball courts than any other location in the city to bring more events that drive those tourism dollars for our community. 
Thank you for your time and your consideration. Thank you. And our final uh, community speaker for the evening will be Pedro. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Pedro Cortez. I'm coming to represent Sporty. Sporty is a facility, soccer facility, located at Pearsall uh, Park, what many people call the Dogs Park. And we are giving a great service to the youth and, uh, and children for this sport, for uh, soccer. Uh, we are receiving about 200 people every day, some days more. On Saturdays, 600 people, some days, some Saturdays more than that. But uh, we don't have the opportunity to grow very much because the lack of, uh, of parking lot. We have capacity only for 120 vehicles, and we need a larger, a larger uh, space for, uh, for the cars. We would like to invite people from the region, from other parts of the state, but we cannot have really big events because the lack of parking lot. Please, please help us to found this uh, project to, to bring more young people to continue promoting uh, this sport. Please, thank you. I'm sorry, we have one more. Steve Avery. Good evening. My name is Stephen Avery. I'm a, a constituent and resident of District 7. I've lived in the Jefferson Woodlawn Park, Monticello Park neighborhood since 1978. I have witnessed a lot of improvements at Woodlawn Park over the past 43 years. And I would like to thank Councilwoman Anda Sandoval for her efforts in maintaining and improving the urban green space in San Antonio. I would also like to commend and thank Homer Garcia of San Antonio Parks and Recreation for being eager to work with the Woodlawn Lake Community Association and Woodlawn Park, and for partnering with San Antonio River Authority on improvements to the Bertha Almageta Center. I think he's a great partner for the Woodlawn Lake Community Association. I have a few comments as well as a few requests to make. <clears throat> San Antonio has 3,172 square feet of urban green space for, per capita, which puts it at number 44 out of the top 50 cities in the United States. <clears throat> the benefits of accessing urban green space are many. A few of the benefits are enhanced physical activity, reduced exposure to pollution, reduced obesity, Reduce mortality, improve functioning of the immune system, watching your children play if you're a young parent, or watching your grandchildren play if you're older as I am, and being with your family and friends in nature at any age. <clears throat> I, you know, I could say a lot, but a lot has been said. But one thing I would say is for all the grant, all the surface cover that's going to be put in during this bond package, I would request that it be permeable ground cover, not concrete. Thank, thank you, Mr. Avery. Committee members, I want to acknowledge that it is 7.55. As the chairs, we made the decision to hear all public hearing this evening at the expense of time that we would have to discuss. At the request of staff and the advisement of staff, again, I'm going to ask you to submit your questions regarding any presentations you've heard this evening directly to staff 
so that they can determine whether or not they would be able to respond within 48 hours and, and or prior to the next meeting. I'm gonna remind us all and acknowledge we have just received an enormous amount of information. We've received passion about parks, recreation, and open space from our community. And I wanna remind us all again of what our role is. We are an advisory committee. We are tasked to receive community input. We are asked to consider potential projects, but ultimately, we are being held responsible to submit to City Council a final list for consideration for the May election. City Council makes the ultimate decision regarding the specific projects and funding. So with that, I'm going to close the, the meeting. I'll entertain a few questions if there are questions of process and thank you for your attention and time this evening. Ms. Guajardo. Jeanette, who do we give, just on a piece of paper or questions, who, who gets it from the staff? Who do you direct it to? Thank you. John Paterek. Thank you. All that information should be in the last email that you received. I'm up. And, and John, it would be helpful, any questions that come out, since we weren't able to all hear it, if we could get the staff response to any questions distributed to the entire committee. Absolutely. We'll share all questions uh, tomorrow morning that we receive ahead of response, just so everyone knows all the questions that were asked, and then the, the traditional two business days to complete that memo. I believe uh, Ms. Sanchez had a question. Yeah. Um, what, I know I asked the question last time, and I don't, I was very... I wasn't satisfied with the answer that I got, so I, I want to be able to have these conversations. So if next time we get together, we also have this many citizens uh, speaking, which I think is great. How do we find time to speak amongst ourselves so we make decisions based on hearing each other? I just don't want to say it's 8 o'clock. I mean, COVID has made Zoom meetings be an hour and <laughs> these sorts of meetings be two hours, but I think we, we have a lot to say, and I'd love to be able to engage with all of you. I appreciate that, Graciela, and I am certainly understanding where you're coming from. We're doing our very best to honor the public hearing process. We may or may not have as many citizens to be heard at the next time. Uh, this evening, we were given the list right before the meeting started, and we will consult with staff to see how we might be able to revise uh, the time for the next meeting. And I'm willing to, um, move or give my name and place of work and whatever for public transparency since that was a question raised by one of our speakers and I think others may. So how do we share that information? Because I believe in public tra uh, transparency. So, Those who feel that they want to comply with that are certainly welcome to submit it. Um, again, that is not something that we are required to respond to and I appreciate you sharing your position on that. Any other comments or questions before we close? Staff, do you have any last minute announcements? Okay, I wanna remind everybody that we have a break for the holiday. The next meeting isn't until December 7th. Please mark your calendars. You should receive an email from staff within 48 hours of any response that they're able to provide you. You will receive another email prior to the next meeting. Thank you so much, everyone, for your time this evening. Yeah. Committee members, I just want to, um, sorry, remind you about the December 4th bus tour. It's in your packet on your calendar. Please make sure you note that on your schedule. December 4th for the bus tour, you'll receive information. Thank you for being welcome, man. Don't forget about Cuellar. No, exactly. But you were, you're recommended for funding, right? Yes, but it's uh, normally, because uh, we're a contract under contract, we our nonprofit does all the, the repairs, all the, so the infrastructure so old, that they want us to fix it and whatever dollars we give the city or spend for the 